The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 21 of your distant learning session with Tise Innocent. Before we examine our lesson 21, there is a need to correct the assignment that was given during the previous lesson. During our previous lesson, we were asked to calculate the specific gravity of a certain mineral Z whose mass is 80 grams in air and in water 65 grams. We are also expected to describe in relative terms the density of that mineral. A second assignment at the end of our previous lesson we are expected to arrange some minerals and objects in order of increasing hardness. Amongst these minerals and objects we had quartz, corundum, copper penny, topaz, window glass, apatite, calcite, diamond, gypsum and tarp. We take the first question, calculating the specific gravity of a mineral. During our last class, we give the arithmetical expression of specific gravity as weight of mineral in air, all on the weight of mineral in air minus the weight of mineral in water. In other words, weight of mineral in air divided by weight of equal volume of water. So, the data we have, the weight of mineral in air, W, A, is 80. Weight of mineral in water is 65. So, substituting in this arithmetical expression, we have 80 divided by 80 minus 65. In other words, 80 divided by 15, which gives us 5.3. Remember, specific gravity is unitless. It is a ratio. So, the specific gravity of that mineral is 5.3. A mineral with such specific gravity can be described as being denser. We now take Density. Density has dimension and arithmetically density. Rho is mass over volume. Density rho is mass over volume. But in our data, we have been given the weight of the mineral in air and the weight in water. The difference in these two masses gives us the volume of water displaced. And the volume of water displaced corresponds to the volume of the mineral. So our rho density here is now 80 grams 
divided by 15 cm cube giving us 5.3 grams per cm cube the previous answer for specific gravity was 5.3 for density we have a unit attached to it grams per cm cube so mineral z is a more dense mineral Second question, arranging the minerals and objects in increasing order of hardness, here we need to make use of the mole scale of hardness. The correct order should be tag, which is the softest, gypsum, calcite, copper penny, Apatite at the fifth position of hardness, most scale. Window glass, quartz at seven. Topaz at eight. Corundum, nine. And diamond at the last position. So, softest to hardest. This is supposed to be the rightful order of arrangement when reference is made to the most scale of hardness. We now examined our lesson 21, drawn from mineralogy, precisely physical properties of minerals. Our lesson 1 is titled Physical properties of minerals four, and we are going to examine this lesson starting with lesson objectives, the changes that should be inculcated in the learner at the end of our lesson. Entry requirement, those basic knowledge that the learner should know should have in order to better understand our lesson of day. A real life situation which should be addressed through some learning activities. Application exercises in order to consolidate, to test the understanding of our lesson. And our lesson 21 will end with an assignment. So we look at the lesson objectives. At the end of our lesson 21, the learner should be able to define and explain mineral cleavage, fracture, and form. The learner should be able to exploit these properties during mineral identification. For entry requirement, prerequisite, the knowledge of bonding, thus that electrostatic force that binds atoms together in a compound is necessary. How bond strength varies within compound will be useful in a proper understanding of these physical properties. We take a real life situation. For every product, there is a raw material. And the choice of raw material depends on the purpose for which the object should be used. So here we have diamond, from it we can produce a ring. Quartz, from it we can blow glass. So if we take the first case of ring production, the scientific problem is what influences the choice of a mineral for production of such object. This scientific problem is universal whenever we want to use minerals to produce or to use minerals in our daily lives. The choice of our mineral depends on some factors, hypothesis, 
Could it be the abundance of the minerals? Could it be the physical and chemical properties? Or method of extraction from it? Or through our learning activities, we are going to identify a correct hypothesis. As learning activities, we shall define and explain cleavage, fracture, and form as physical properties of minerals. We take cleavage of minerals. It is a tendency for a mineral to break along planes of weakness, producing smooth surfaces. This breakage can take place in a perfect manner where we say it is eminent, good or distinct, or the breakage can be less perfect where we say the cleavage is poor or indistinct. This cleavage can take place following one direction, two directions, or many directions. So, when I examined some minerals and their number of cleavage directions. We should also note, while observing these minerals, that cleavage is conditioned by planes of weak bonding. There are some minerals that will have bond strength equal in all directions. Those minerals will refer to them as homo desmic minerals. There are minerals that will have bond strengths that are different in different directions. Different bond types. For example, those minerals with different bond types are referred to as heterodesmic minerals. Now we take first an example of a mineral with one cleavage direction. Here on our image, we have a mica, it can be Moscovite, it can be Biotite. They have one perfect cleavage direction, described as basal cleavage. The image shows, the axe on the image shows you the plane of weakness, along which the mineral will split. So an example of a mineral with one direction of cleavage is mica. We have minerals with two cleavage directions. Our example of the board, we have amphibols and first pass. Amphibols, because of their two direction of cleavage and the first pass, their cleavages are described as prismatic. Here with the amphibols, the cleavage direction ranges between 54 and 124 or 56 and 124. For the first pass, the cleavage direction are almost perpendicular to one another. This gives room for the production of minor prisms when the mineral cleaves. So examples of minerals with two cleavage direction, as illustrated, we have amphibols, first pass, pyroxenes, and even calcites are also, pyroxenes are also good examples. It is even the cleavage direction of pyroxene and amphibole that serves as one of the basic factors to distinguish the two minerals. Three cleavage directions. Here we have calcite and galena. For galena, the mineral cleaves in three directions that meet a right angle, producing small cubes. Why for calcite? The intersection of the cleavage planes are not perpendicular, ending up producing rhombs, rhombic cleavage. So these are minerals with two cleavage directions. Minerals with four cleavage directions. We take the example of fluoride as indicated on the image. We have minerals with six cleavage direction, sphalerite or zinc blend, which do not intersect at 
right angle. We look at fracture as a physical property dependent upon state of aggregate. Fracture is a breakage of mineral leaving behind rough surfaces, uneven surfaces. Fracture, unlike cleavage, is not controlled by direction of weak bonding. Why surfaces of cleavage are smooth, those of fracture are irregular. So the irregular breakage of mineral, leaving behind uneven surfaces, describes fracture. Each mineral has its characteristic fracture. Note should be taken that a mineral can cleave and still fracture. So we examine some types of fractures with examples of minerals that show such fractures. We take the first fracture description. Fracture can be described as concoidal. Example of such mineral quartz. If the mineral breaks, leaving behind smooth, concave, or convex surfaces, as indicated on the image. The mineral breaks, leaving behind smooth, concave, or convex surfaces. Example, quartz. We take even fracture. The surface left behind after breakage is flat or almost flat. This is exemplified by the slicker chert. If you look at the surface on the image, it is flat. Such fracture is described as even. Some minerals show uneven fracture. Example of barite, where the fracture surface left behind after the breakage of the mineral is rough, as shown on the image. Fracture, uneven fracture, leaves behind rough surfaces. Fibrous and splintery. In this case, example, asbestos. The surface left behind after the breakage of the mineral is fibrous. The mineral breaks, leaving behind fibrous surface, as seen on the image. Here we have asbestos and these are fibers or fibrous surfaces left behind as the mineral breaks. Hockey fracture. Mineral breaks leaving behind sharp irregularities on the surface. Clearly exemplified by cast iron. We have small sharp surfaces left behind as the mineral breaks. We have earthy fracture. When the surface of the mineral has the appearance of earth or resembles earth when it breaks. An example is limonite. So these are examples of fractures and their description. We now take form of minerals. The form of a mineral is the relative development of individual crystal faces, such that when the crystal face is well formed, we describe the mineral as crystallized. If we have tiny crystals that are related with one another in any manner, then it is crystalline. Mineral is crystalline. Cryptocrystalline is when the crystals are poorly formed, poorly distinguished small crystals, and if the mineral does not have any crystal faces formed at all, if the mineral lacks form, then we describe it as being Amorphous. 
A particular compound can be crystalline, can have crystalline varieties, crypto-crystalline varieties, and amorphous varieties. We take the example of silica. Silica as quartz is crystalline. Silica as chalcedony is crypto-crystalline. And hydrated silica as opal is amorphous. So form depicts the development of individual crystal faces. We look at habit of minerals. The external shape that a crystal or aggregate of crystals assume after its development depicts habit. Habit therefore is the external expression of a mineral crystal. Various terms have been used to describe habit depending on the outward look of the mineral. We take the example of stipnite with its habit described as acicula. On the image, we have needle-like crystals radiating from a center. Such habit is described as acicula. Example, stipnite. We have reniform, exemplified here by malachite and hematite, where the surface of the mineral has kidney shape. Such a habit or our appearance is described as reniform. We have bladed habit, exemplified by kyanite, in which case the mineral extends to one direction flat and extends to one direction. Example, kyanite. We have prismatic habit exemplified by the first pass, amphiboles and quartz, where we have crystals whose sides are elongated towards a particular direction. When crystals have this outward appearance, it is described as being prismatic. We have foliate habit, mineral showing the ten having a tendency of being split or can be split into sheets. Such habit, exemplified by Muscovite, is described as foliate. Fibrous habit, example asbestos, the mineral shows radiating fibers, hair-like fibers radiating from all directions. Some habits are described in the table. We have mammillated, displaying large spheroidal surfaces, malachite is an example, amygdaloidal, and botroidal. We also have columnar and weary or filiform. All of these are other terms to describe habit. Recall, cleavage, fracture are all terms that depict the breakage of minerals. But why cleavage leaves behind a smooth surface, fracture leaves behind rough surfaces. Why cleavage is controlled by direction of weak bonding within a mineral, Fracture is not controlled by direction of weak bonds. The degree of the development of crystal phase depicts form. This can be crystallized, crystalline, cryptocrystalline, and amorphous. We now examine some exercises to consolidate our lesson. Question 1. Which one of the following minerals show a single cleavage direction? A. Mica B. Galena C. Calcite and D. Orthoclis Our correct response should be Mica. Remember, during the presentation of our lesson, 
We give examples of minerals that have one cleavage direction, examples of minerals that have two cleavage direction, and those that have more than two. And the example we give for mineral with one cleavage direction is mica, be it muscovite or biotite. Two, which of the minerals below displays a conchoidal fracture? A. Mica B. Quartz C. Asbestos D. Galena Our correct answer here is Quartz. Quartz, when broken, will show us convex or concave surfaces. Such manner of breaking, leaving behind such surfaces, characterize what is referred to as conchoidal fracture. Question 3. Which of the physical properties below is controlled by a weaker bone direction? Which physical property below is controlled by a weaker bone direction? A. Tenacity B. Fracture C. Cleavage D. Form During our lesson, we defined all of these terms. And the correct answer to this question should be answer C. Cleavage Cleavage in mineral is controlled by weaker bone directions. This is not the case with form, fracture, and tenacity. Question 4. Opal has a form most likely described as crystalline, crypto-crystalline, amorphous, crystallized. Remember, during our lesson we said the same compound can have different forms. Crystalline forms, crypto-crystalline forms, amorphous or crystallized. Now we took the example of silica. Here, our correct answer is C. Opal, as a compound of silica, is amorphous and hydrated. So opal is a hydrated amorphous silica. Question 5. First pass. Pyroxenes, hornblains, and quartz have well developed elongated parallel crystal faces in one direction. They assume a bladed habit, tabular habit, prismatic habit, and acicular habit. Remember all of these habits, we have described them and we have shown images to illustrate them. So the correct answer here for these minerals is C, prismatic habit. Faces are elongated to one direction. As assignment, you list and briefly describe four physical properties of minerals based on the state of aggregate. We differentiate between fracture and cleavage, form and habit as your assignment. Our next lesson will be physical properties of minerals five. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyum. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mut. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa tina bia jinki do. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mute tam zabike. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen 